Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Pro Handicap, the thriving market. So let's uh, dive right into it. Now, what you have to understand is that as my last episode, I talked about handicaps. Handicaps are dying flat out. They are dying like uh, companies are no longer investing boatload of money as they used to. However, pro handicaps are becoming a bigger and bigger part of our daily life. Simply think of it this way, any handicap that is costing upwards of $1,500 to $2,000 is generally uh, reaches in that price bracket. So what do they offer and why they are winning? Let's. Uh, it's very simple. It, generally, they come with bigger sensor. Now, what I mean by bigger sensor, I don't mean it like, you know, full frame sensor. Sometimes they could have micro four thirds, sometimes they could have one inch sensor or APS-C sensor. Generally, that is the range. They will not give you full frame, but they will give you much bigger sensor than normal handicam. So you will get that shallow depth of field. And the lens generally accommodating these things are generally good quality. They will not go for 50X, 60X. They will try to give you as best quality lens as they can give you. So generally, 10 to 12 x with a fixed aperture 20 uh, you know 20 x zoom with good aperture so these sort of things are possible in handicam industry if you go for professional handicaps now what does this sort of thing make it professional well control like that's the only difference between a you know a consumer end product and a high end product a high end product allows you to control every damn thing as you can see how many controls knobs things of that nature we have this is directly meant for someone who know what they are doing and uh, know exactly what they have to change in order to achieve their desired result so Generally, you want to change uh, you know, volume control, you don't have to fiddle around with it. You will have a dedicated knob. You can change ND filters in many of them. As in, uh, let's say you're directly going from a tunnel uh, to bright sunlight, you can change the ND filter on the, on the go and you will get a very good uh, quality image. And uh, many of them have what we call aperture rings. Basically, you have three rings on the lens and most of them are generally not connected physically. They are connected by what we call drive-by wire. So one will be your know, focus, one would be your zoom, another would be your aperture. So you'll get a lot of control directly. So you have to understand this, everything exists in a context. Without the context, it's meaningless. So context in here, it is like, it's almost as good as these big movie cameras. Now, one thing uh, this movie camera offer you is very simple. It's they most of them generally come with uh, interchangeable lens. So you can precisely select which lens you want. And to give you a context of it, there are movie directors like um, people who are so influential, they don't choose the camera, they choose the lens. Like this has happened that people have like selected a lens. Okay, this lens is meant for 70 millimeter film. Okay, give me 70 millimeter film. This sort of things have happened because lenses give you uh, color. Lenses is the basically thing that is coloring your uh, image. So if lens gives you a good quality color, you're gonna get a good quality image. If lens itself is bad, yeah, you're done. So for this reason, lenses play a very crucial role. That is very crucial when you are uh, like, you know, only recording for five minutes or 10 minutes. These cameras do not, uh, they are not meant to record like, you know, three hour or four hour shooting. You can't do that in a red camera. Although you can do a bit of that in this because red camera have a, such a small memory that you can only record for 15 to 20 minutes. And that's provided you have continuous power. And uh, so be mindful, like if you are talking about this sort of professional handicap, it can go toe to toe with these puppies, not because that has better lens, simply because it has much more control, control that are present in uh, movie cam. So you can't change the lens, but you get the control. And on top of that, that camera is generally built for continuous recording and they test it. Like when they give you the handicap, it's generally been tested, at least the design has been tested, that it can work upwards of four or five hours continuously. It can be powered externally. You can record the data externally sometimes also. And many of the Panasonic camera come with the ability that you can swap cards. Like you will have two cards. One would be written. The moment it's full, it will create a clone package and then dump it into the second one. So you will have a bit of overlap. Then you can replace the first card, put the second card, continuously keep recording. And uh, even though DSLRs nowadays come with uh, DSLR and mirrorless comes with dual card slot, very few of them have the ability to A, hot swap, B, uh, record video on both of them. Generally for images they do, but for video they don't. So be mindful of that. These cameras generally do this sort of function. 
and when we are talking about somebody shooting you have to understand it's a package deal whenever you are buying something like this it's not that oh this is eight thousand dollar you spend eight thousand dollar you're good like you have to spend like another three four thousand dollar for lenses five ten thousand dollar for the accessories things of that teacher pile up here you know what you're getting it's like okay this is a complete package so let's say you do a lot of what we call run and gun shooting that will satisfy you let's say you just uh, came around some scene and somebody say hey we, we're gonna have this celebrity randomly showing up and we're gonna do an interview again this camera will take time to set up that quick to go so and from cost point of view they do not cost a lot so as i said two thousand dollar now that two thousand dollar would be a lot but be mindful it is giving you generally either one inch or APS-C, which is not that small compared to a full frame so you got the sensor you got good lens and it has continuous recording limits um, and the continuous recording ability and hot swapping and that you can power it from external system so all those things combined if you compare it to a dslr or a mirrorless uh, or anything like that flat out there is no comparison simply because they are not meant to like a photographic camera is a photographic camera this is for video every aspect about these cameras are tailor made for video every aspect of it and they are tested good cameras are if somebody gives you a crappy one i'm sorry for that but they are tested and not to mention two thousand dollar may seem extreme but then you have to realize sony a7 mark 3 that is like you know uh, ca causing all the ripple is two thousand dollars but that two thousand dollar is for body only basically you spend two thousand dollar you will have nothing at the other end you'll just have nothing because you have to add lens without lens it's pointless so from that point of view these things are not that expensive so if you are considering any sort of profession where video is your main you know bread and butter be mindful pay close attention to these puppies so when i say uh, they generally come made for video and generally have no limitation what i'm referring to is simply because they don't have recording limits this is the most annoying thing that a company as big as sony or nikon or canon flat out block their video recording to 30 minutes now earlier many of you are familiar with old cam digital cameras there used to be a limit what we call fat file system limit as in a video recorded file cannot exceed 4 gb so if you exceed 4 gb it will cut the file and create a new file so you may have a software that allowed you know 4 gb 4 gb 4 gb 4 gb files and you you can stitch them up in a program afterwards so you'll get that but x fat came along so the file size limitation is gone then why the heck our dslrs have that 30 minute limit simply because to exceed 30 minute limit it will be classified as video camera in european union so european union would be like if your uh, your camera can record more than 30 minutes you have to pay what we call video camera tax now it's not that much but it is a little bit more that they have to pay panasonic did that for gh5 but not for every panasonic camera be mindful if you are buying a panasonic camera choose and read the specification care, uh, carefully because not every panasonic camera is like you know 24 into 7 recording uh, most of them don't only one or two has so because of that reason flat out even though camera could have a sensor that can you know continuously record for two three hours without overheating could have battery that can do, go for that long could have a card capacity that can do that long it simply wouldn't allow you to why tax in this they pay tax so there is no recording limit and not to mention when i say continuous recording is that it can actually support it think of it this way if you want to understand the power consumption of these puppies it's more or less the same if not less compared to a dslr so how much watt per hour is being consumed by these is generally on the same level than your dslr so that means the whole body is acting as a heat sink there is enough mass that it can discharge heat as in like you know dissipate heat without you know causing overheating issues so they are capable of running for multiple uh, multi multi hour sessions and uh, as you can see i already mentioned many uh, professional handicams have this function where you'll have multiple card slot and they can sometimes also while you're recording onto both card slot you can also stream and uh, they generally give you a very high quality recording capability as in 4 to 2 10 bit internal so do check this manual because uh, pro handicams is a wide, wide genre range i can't just give you okay this handicap every handicap has different so be mindful they generally give you a very high quality video image and this is the you know final nail in the coffin they generally have better low light performance than your uh, normal camera and i'm like wait 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 how how that happens simply because they use what we call a low resolution sensor so if you check the resolution of the sensor is very low to give you an idea uh, 4k red epic sensor is generally only 8 megapixel the benefit of that your photo site the site that you are recording image to is become very big benefit signal to noise ratio becomes better benefit you can see in the dark 
so generally all uh, movie cameras have very clear image because of that nature so handycam also implement those sort of function they will not give you 24 megapixel sensor because that's a waste of uh, resources here so they generally use low uh, basically megapixel sensor which gives you if not, uh, generally better low noise performance if not same low noise performance as you will get the best uh, dslr or a mirrorless so be aware of that that's why i said this is built for one thing and it does that thing well now as you can see this has two xqd card slots so you can literally and they have led also so you will know which card is ready to be removed so once the one first card fills up let's say a1 the light will start flashing and you can pop that card out put a new blank card in and continuously keep recording and uh, all, almost all of them have the ability to be externally powered so you can just simply use it as a webcam if you so wish now better audio now anybody who started in youtube will be very familiar with the idea that camera audio generally sucks even with the best of the best dslr or mirrorless you can buy the audio flat out sucks on this puppy audio generally takes a much serious consideration so much so that uh, sony panasonic and uh, Canon generally give you a flat out powered uh, input where you can connect professional grade microphones into it directly and the, what we call or, uh, onboard op amps basically the amplifier that is there for boosting the signal and converting it to digital signals they are generally much higher quality so and because there is much more physical space they generally do a much better job so you can record audio directly high quality audio you would not need uh, this sort of contraption uh, directly on camera itself which saves a hell lot of a hassle if you are doing a run and gun shoot you can directly do this and many of them like especially sony ones because sony also makes a lot of uh, wireless microphone you can directly clip into the system no wire attached like you will simply mount the system on the camera and your actors or whoever is it is they will simply have lavalier mics on them so the audio really plays a crucial role especially in video and uh, these things generally take a lot of effort into making sure that they will give you a best audio experience possible that is flat out undeniable you will not get any dslr or any mirrorless that can come even come half as close as this and the final control aspect of it is that they generally give you live control because it's a video camera they know that you can't have the luxury to directly plop out all the settings and like you know you'll be like oh you want to change aperture this i have no idea why nikon does that it's like oh you want to change aperture yeah uh, stop video recording and then you can change the aperture it's a software limit but these sort of camera they have no such limitation at least they try to remove as many limitation as they can you can change the iso on the fly you can change the nd filter on the fly you can change the as you can see this three ring uh, architecture is very common in professional dslrs uh, why i'm saying dslr professional uh, handy cams where you will have one for zoom as in how much zoom you can do another for uh, focus another for aperture all these things things are independent and will be working no matter whether you're recording or you're not recording so this is really really helpful like if you need to do something like if you saw something and you're like okay okay that uh, you know let's say explosion is about to happen you have a scene set up and you need to reduce the aperture quickly again this camera will allow you to do that and if you want to do that rack focus thing this sort of thing will allow you to do it very easily other things also like uh, light, uh, audio setup itself also gets a dedicated knobs generally so even though let's say one uh, actor started screaming you can directly on the camera body without going into menu without anything you can just change the volume level so and you wouldn't be surprised to find out many uh, documentaries are generally shot on these sort of puppies because even though you can afford a red pack it's just i told you like if you want to do run and gun like you know off the cuff this cameras are much better tool than those camera so this was my presentation on why professional handycams are like you know taking the market by storm and i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment on my video and uh, please subscribe share it amongst your friend uh, hashtag #cameratuesday and uh, if you are free press the bell icon and as always thanks for watching